Thank you all for coming out. My name is Jeff McCluskey. I'm the president of the Mason County Patriots. And uh, this is a great showing. Thank you all for coming out. My name is Jeff McCluskey. I'm going to um, read a few statements, and then we're going to have our invocation and the pledge, and then we'll have our speakers. This is a watershed moment in the history of our republic. This is no moment of levity, as the very basis of our freedom, the right of self-defense, is under attack. From a barrage of lies and power grabs outside the rule of law, when we leave here today, it is our intention to more strongly rebut the false reality that is impressed upon us and renew ourselves and our freedom with the prospect of free people joining together to protect each other and our community. We're going to begin today by asking for God's guidance and blessing, and then we'll, uh, Rich, Rich Basher will be saying the invocation, and then David Cox will be saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we beseech thee to look upon our nation and our people. Though we are undeserving, you, Father, have made us great among the nations of the earth. Let us not forget that this place, this power, comes from you, and that we have them as a trust to use in your service. Save us from pride and arrogance. Make us quick to see the needs of those less fortunate, and promote goodwill and fellowship among all men and women. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, God bless America. Stay behind the speakers. They gotta, gotta stay back behind the up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know that we need a leader to this do this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job, David. Our first speaker today is going to be Kevin McCarney. He's a Midwest transplant who moved to Colorado in 2003. He has been a small business owner and currently works as a salesman for J-Max Sales and sells health and life insurance. Uh, he was a campaign manager for Ray Scott in 2010. He's a board member of the WSCA. Uh, he was elected second vice chair of the Mesa County Republican Party in 2011. Uh, he, is he is the chairman of the Colorado Freedom Alliance. He's been married for 15 years and is a conservative first. He's very vocal in support of conservative cause and his causes and is committed to expanding the conservative cause. Let's give a round of applause for Kevin McCartney. that thing back in there because generally people can hear me pretty well. Um, I was reading online this morning that a person tried to commit a robbery with a hammer yesterday, tried to rob a bank. And Barack Obama addressed that in his uh, radio address today. There's now a five day waiting period on hammers <laughs> and no longer buy a sledgehammer. So um, there is a growing chorus of people who want to infringe on our Second Amendment right to bear arms. Their cry is, the Second Amendment is about hunting. In fact, just this week, Governor Cuomo of New York, while he was passing his state's restrictive and unconstitutional gun law, said, you don't need ten bullets to shoot a deer! <laughs> well, with all due respect, Governor, the Second Amendment 
is not about killing deer. A recent poll shows that 60% of Americans favor more restrictive gun laws. Now, I don't know who they're polling, but what frightens me is it shows a complete lack of knowledge of history in some of our constituents out there. Folks, the framers of the Constitution just lived through decades of a two authoritarian central government starting with the Sugar Act in 1764 and continuing through the Intolerable Acts of 1774 the British government tried to subjugate its citizens with arbitrary taxes and rules at the point of the bayonet and the muzzle of a musket. The following year our founders watched as their government from Britain tried to seize weapons and stores of powder at Lexington and Concord to disarm them from protecting themselves. The revolution that they fought in the coming years against the mightiest army on the face of the planet was filled with that army hurting people off their lands, forcing people to take the army into their homes to make them live. Well, j Folks, we won that revolution because the citizens were armed with the same arms that the British soldiers had. When our framers began to write the Constitution, they knew full well the danger of a combination of an unarmed citizenry and a powerful central government. That danger and the danger it represented to the freedom of those citizens. In other words, they knew fully well what they were doing when they wrote the Second Amendment of the Constitution. And they, yes, it did mean assault weapons, and yes, it did mean large clips, even though they didn't exist back then. Now, folks, our Constitution, as originally written, was not acceptable to the 13 states. They demanded and got a line of rights to the citizens, those 10 amendments we know as the Bill of Rights today. This amendment document was ratified by the states, and it spells out the rights of the citizens, rights that the government can never take away or infringe upon. It is a limiting document. It is a negative document. It says the powers of the government that it does not have, not that it does have. And among those rights is the right of the citizen to be armed as well as the government. I read a really impressive quote this week. Here it is. The very purpose of the Bill of Rights was to withdraw certain subjects from the vicissitudes of political controversy, to place them beyond the reach of majorities and officials, and to establish them as legal principles to be applied by the courts. One's right to life, liberty, property, to free speech, free press, freedom of worship and assembly, and other fundamental rights may not be submitted to a vote. They depend on the outcome of no elections. Now, folks, our Constitution provided for a way for the people to change the way we're government by amending the Constitution. The power to change the government resides with us, not with the House of Representatives, not with the Senate, not with the Supreme Court, and not with the President. Our gathering today is in support of our rights means nothing without follow-up action. It is time for our voices to be heard, not just here. I urge you right now, write to your senators, write to your congressmen, and I mean all the congressmen, not just Scott Tipton, all of our congressmen. Remind them of their oaths of office that they took to defend the Constitution and the rights of the citizens. Remind them it is their constitutional duty to defend our rights. Yeah. Remind them the Constitution limits their power, limits the President's power, and limits the Supreme Court's power. The right of the people to defend themselves must remain paramount. Thank you. Next speaking will be Gerald Martinez.